Hey guys, and welcome to my kitchen floor. I thought that I would do a video that I received some interest in all about how we cook in our RV kitchen, what our setup looks like, and how we operate since we have a smaller space to cook with than most people do in like a normal house. So I'm pretty hungry, and I found this awesome recipe that we're gonna be cooking up today. It is this absolutely delicious looking mushroom wild rice soup. And if we go through and you watch this video and you think it looks good, I will leave a link down below so that you can try it out for yourself. But I'm really excited about it. And it's fall now, even though today in Texas it's like 80 degrees and like 90% humidity. It is still fall and I'm definitely in a fall mood. And what is better in the fall than a nice hot cup of soup? So I'm going to make this recipe for the first time, kind of take you guys through that. We can have a chat and just kind of talk about what it's like cooking in an RV kitchen. I have all of my ingredients pre-assembled so we'll go through those and then we'll dive right in. I'm really excited to have you guys here and I really hope that you enjoy this video. Alrighty so now that I am up and on my feet this is our kitchen range and you know people always think that cooking in an RV is gonna be this tremendously difficult task but it's not like most of the time you're gonna be outside laboring away over a kettle that is over a fire. I mean RVs now have pretty much every single amenity that you would have in a regular house on maybe just a slightly smaller scale. So this is our range and it is a little bit smaller than a normal range and there's no oven underneath. We actually have a toaster oven that we cook with that is absolutely wonderful. It's not like an ordinary toaster oven. It's basically a conventional oven just <laughs> smaller. So like I said before I have all of my ingredients pre-assembled for this recipe and we're gonna be using some fun stuff. So I'm really excited about this because I'm getting to use some stuff that I've never used before like canned coconut milk. I've had recipes that have called for it before but I didn't have it on hand so I used something else but I know this stuff is supposed to be like magic for plant-based recipes. A couple of boxes of vegetable broth, a few cans of mushrooms, an onion, some parsley, and the wild rice blend which I've never cooked with before and it's just because I've never had a recipe for it but I absolutely love wild rice and I've got to be honest with you this was not cheap this was one of the two brands that Walmart had and this was the cheaper of the two but it wasn't super cheap luckily it doesn't take a lot to make a lot because rice expands like crazy I only needed a three-fourths of a cup for this recipe and the recipe told me to let it soak in a bowl for like 15 to 30 minutes I don't really know why that's just what they said so that is soaking ignore that that's something for Stuart's dinner tonight. I have my pot here, I have my lighter, and we're gonna get started. This stove should be able to light just by turning this sparker knob right here, but this knob isn't the right knob for the stove. Somebody threw it on there before we bought it and we discovered that after the fact. It'd be a really easy part to replace, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. So in order to light the burner, you just have to turn it on because it's gas. And then voila! you have a flame. Alright, so the first thing that this recipe says to do is to rinse and soak the rice, which I'm already doing so we don't need to worry about that. Then it says that while the rice is soaking we should chop and prep the vegetables. Really the only thing that I need to chop and prep is this onion. The recipe called for fresh mushrooms, but in my experience, if you're going to be sautéing something, it's as easy to just use canned mushrooms. They taste practically the same to me. They're cheaper and they're easier to store in a limited amount of space like what we have to work with. So I'm going to get this onion chopped, I'm going to get the mushrooms drained and ready to go, and then after that, you heat up a little bit of vegan butter or oil in your pot and you sauté everything. So let's get started on that. Alright y'all, I'm not gonna lie, that seems like a lot of mushroom to saute in one pot at one time. It didn't tell me to split it up so I just dumped it all in the cook pot like it said to. And okay yeah, I did add extra mushroom than what it called for, but not a lot. It called for four cups of mushrooms and I think I added like maybe a half cup more. 
it's just a lot. So I'm gonna let the moisture cook off of this for a while because it, it needs to and we'll come back to it in a little bit and see how it looks. But while this is sauteing, let me show you our kitchen cart. <sighs> Those onions are strong. So like I mentioned before, we don't have a traditional oven. So we have this really awesome pizza oven, toaster oven, style oven that we got with these awesome French doors that open like so and you can push them to the sides and they'll stay open in case you need both hands to grab something out. And it's big enough that you can cook just about anything that you would ever need to. It will fit like a full size pizza and you can adjust these racks and everything. I mean, I love this oven. It works really, really well. And we got this kitchen cart to accommodate it, and we knew that it would fit in this spot perfectly. It's right next to our couch, which I guess is a little bit weird, but when you're living in an RV, you kind of just have to do what you gotta do. We really wanted a kitchen cart because it gave us a place to keep some things. So, for example, we keep like breads and fruits and, you know, potatoes and that kind of thing on the first shelf and on the bottom shelf is where we keep all of our pots and pans our electric kettle for some reason this jug of oil because I haven't found another place to keep it yet and it's on wheels which makes it really easy to move it around if you need to we always have to wheel it in between the bathroom doors whenever we go somewhere so that it doesn't like fly around when we're driving down the road and it's served us really really well it keeps everything that we needed to keep in one easy to access place. And I bought it from Lowe's, I believe. So if you're in the need for a kitchen cart, highly recommend checking out Lowe's. Now one thing I do want to talk about real quick that is a concern for people whenever they're cooking in an RV kitchen. Um, RVs are not usually the best weatherized wise, like you can insulate them a little bit and build them up and do little things, but in general a lot of the time you're going to feel the elements, especially if it's really, really, really hot. And so a lot of people, what they'll do to avoid heating things up even more with a stove is they will actually cook outside, either literally over a fire with a Dutch oven or with like a Coleman propane stove on their picnic table or whatever. And they'll do that so that they don't heat up everything inside the RV. We have this thermometer here and it monitors our humidity levels and the temperature for inside the RV. And it's a nice way for us to make sure that things aren't too wet in here, um, that the temperature is good, all that good stuff. And it shows the highest that it got and the lowest that it got for the day and it says 84 on here. So like I said, even though it's October here in Texas, today and like over the last couple days it's been super humid and pretty warm. I could cook outside I guess but in my mind there's really no point because either I stand outside in 80 plus degree heat over a pot or I stand inside in 80 plus degree heat over a pot. There's really no difference to me. I guess it's just all about your personal preference. I just kind of embrace the heat and accept it. It is what it is and if you're making amazing food it ends up kind of being worth it anyway so it's really not the end of the world for me. So I'm going to cover this and just let it chill for a little bit and then we will see what we will see. But I've got a really good feeling about this. This is my first time ever making this recipe. I've really been trying to push myself to try new things lately because it's really easy to just get comfortable and keep eating the same things. Not that there's anything wrong with that as long as you're eating the right kinds of the same things. But I just felt like I needed to try something new and I thought what better time to do that than in a video to kind of just show you guys what it's like to cook here. As you can see there's really nothing to it. The only time it does get a little bit crazy is if I've got multiple pots and like multiple things going on because I basically do all of the cooking. I cook all of my food and all of Stuart's food and we eat basically different things because I'm plant based and he's not. That can get a little bit hectic because we only have three burners but for the most part I think I do a really good job of balancing everything out. I try to clean up as I go. That is key. That is something that I 
definitely have to do or otherwise it will look like a bomb went off. In general though, this is all there is to it and it's not really anything crazy. I feel like with all this RV stuff, people get so freaked out about things like cooking and storage and dumping the black tank and all that stuff. There's really nothing to it. It's super, super basic. It's super, super easy. Anybody can do it. And it just, it becomes a part of your life like anything else. So I have to get started on Stuart's dinner. I'm making him some marinated chicken and he said he didn't want any of this soup, which is totally fine. But I think I will make him a side of the long grain rice and then I'll season that up and everything for him and like maybe steam up some broccoli gotta feed my man well. That will be his dinner and this and I think probably some toast will be mine. I know a lot of people who are in the plant-based vegan community would probably take issue with the fact that I'm plant-based and yet I'm willing to cook food that isn't plant-based like chicken for someone who isn't but the way that I see it, you know, for the longest time this was not a perspective that I understood. I thought anyone who didn't want to contribute to animal agriculture, was out of their mind, crazy, out of touch. I just didn't understand it. And now being on the other side of that and understanding that perspective, I can really see both sides of it. And you just, you cannot force anything on anyone. You can expose them to new ideas and new ways of life. You can have conversations with them, but you can't be a Nazi about things. And that, especially in a relationship, if you want that relationship to last, which I definitely do, is really crucial. So that is my perspective on it all. I know not everybody would share that perspective, but it's working well for me so far. And you know, I've always said that my relationships with the people around me are more important than my ideologies. And I'm pretty sure I will continue to feel that way for the rest of my life. So anyway, I will climb down off of my soapbox now and uh, we'll check back in in a little bit with this soup and uh, take it from there. So hope you guys are enjoying it so far. Alright guys, it's the moment I've been waiting for quite literally all day. I got my bowl of soup and it is very soupy and perfect and exactly what I was hoping it would be. I toasted up some whole wheat bread and I'm going to dip in because I don't have any chips but I think the bread will be great. So let's try this and see how it is. Oh, that's really good. And I was absolutely right about the coconut milk. The coconutiness of it goes away whenever you cook with it. And what you're left with is just like a really nice creamy base. I am going to enjoy this quite a bit. Well guys, I've got an empty bowl and an empty plate in front of me, so I think my meal was definitely a success. I even got Stuart to try a little bit of the broth and he even said that it was okay. So I think that my meal was definitely a big thumbs up. I Like I said at the beginning, I'll put the recipe down below in the description, so if you guys want to try it out, you can. And if you do, I would love to hear what you think about it because I thought it was a slam dunk. But anyway, that pretty much wraps it up. That's all there is really to our cooking in this RV. It's really pretty simple and pretty basic. We keep it that way. We don't get too crazy or out of control because otherwise it would just be an absolute nightmare. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this inside look at what all of that is like. Let me know what you thought. And if you haven't already, I hope you'll subscribe and maybe give this video a big thumbs up. That would be super cool. And if there's something else that you would like to see about our lifestyle here, just let me know and I will take it into consideration. I have a bunch of ideas in the works, so definitely more stuff coming. But thank you for making it so far in this video and I hope I'll see you for the next one whenever and wherever that may be. Bye.